click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous one we have got to know that is uh, what are the different kind of that is uh, uh, the nucleophilic substitution reaction and in that case we have got to know that is there are two types that is uh, unimolecular substitution reaction and bimolecular substitution reaction. So we are going to talk about in very deep detail about uh, the mechanism that has been exhibited by the uh, alkyl halides that shows that is unimolecular substitution reaction. So what are those uh, mechanism? Let us talk about that. So first of all, let me talk about what is mechanism. So mechanism is basically a very deep detail about uh, how the reaction occurs and it also gives us the information about uh, that is uh, how much energy is being spent so as to convert a reactant into product and what kind of other transition that we could see in an, uh, whenever a reaction is in progress. So that kind of uh, that is details are being uh, uh, that is can be evaluated with the help of the mechanism of a reaction and this is what I want want to talk about in this uh, that is in this topic so there will be such points uh, that i want to elaborate during uh, that is uh, during explaining the mechanism of an sn1 reaction so let us start with the first one that is uh, what is the mechanism of sn1 reaction so as we have got to know that is sn1 reaction is nothing but it is known as unimolecular substitution reaction and as i have said earlier also that is the rate of this kind of reaction it will depend on either of uh, the substrate or either of the nucleophile so this is what i want to talk about so let me uh, give a short example that is uh, from which we'll get to know that is uh, uh, a general reaction or a basic an example uh, which is exhibiting SN1 reaction and let us uh, talk about that example as the hydrolysis of tertiary butyl bromide. So the hydrolysis of the tertiary butyl bromide using uh, aqueous QH, this is the one that is showing as in one mechanism. And uh, let me give you an idea that how the reaction uh, takes place. And uh, since we are talking about as in one reaction, so that for the rate will depend on either of the substrate uh, that is tertiary butyl bromide or either of that is uh, uh, the KOH or the nucleophile. So tertiary butyl bromide can be uh, mentioned in this way. But since we are talking about uh, a nucleophilic reaction, so that's the reason even though if you use the KOH, the OH will be responsible to uh, substitute uh, the bromine atom over here. So therefore, I'm just uh, writing over here as OH minus I. Which on substitution reaction, it will give us that is uh, tertiary butyl alcohol along with that of Br minus I. Or basically, we could call also call it as that is KBR. So this is a basically a substitution reaction that I have uh, that I have talked about in this way. So there is also a that is certain kind of that is stereochemistry that would be involved in the during conversion of uh, that is from tertiary butyl bromide to uh, that is uh, tertiary butyl alcohol. But uh, for that we'll keep it later. But uh, before that, let us understand that uh, how this is called to be that is SN1 uh, reaction. So it has been found that uh, during this reaction, that is the rate of uh, this kind of uh, nucleophilic substitution reaction, it is dependent on that is tertiary butyl bromide. So it does it depends on only the substrate and not on the nucleophile. So therefore, we could represent the rate of the reaction as that is the rate of the reaction is directly proportional to even uh, we can uh, we have also studied about the kinetic uh, uh, chemical kinetics and we have got to know about the rate law so therefore we could easily write it as that is rate is equals to or the rate of the reaction is equals to the rate constant k and which is dependent on the concentration of the uh, substrate and in this case the substrate is basically ch3 thrice beer and it will not depend on the nucleophile that is OH uh, minus I and uh, so this indicates that the order of reaction that is what we know that is uh, uh, it is a combination of the experimental component that is belonging to the rate law so here it is basically one and here there is a or the value of x is one and there is no y over here so therefore the order of reaction is is x plus y or either we could say it as 1 plus 0 that is nothing but 1 so therefore it is a first order reaction hence the name is unimolecular substitution reaction 
So this clearly indicates that the overall reaction will depend on the tertiary butyl bromide and uh, now let us understand the mechanism behind that. So this uh, SN1 reaction is basically a two-step mechanism that is uh, in step number one it will be a very slow step while the step number two uh, it will be very fast step. and uh, in the step number one which is basically a very slow step so this uh, indicates that uh, the bond breaking uh, could be taken place over here and that's the reason that uh, this kind of step is also known as rate determining step and from which we could easily indicate that how or what is the rate of the reaction and uh, there are also several details that we could get uh, from uh, this step or basically like uh, uh, that is rate constant and all certain kind of information that could be uh, indicated from the first step so so now let me mention over here that SN1 mechanism or SN1 mechanism I would say that well or we could say that is SN1 mechanism is a two-step process so now let me talk about the first step and uh, let us understand the first step in very deep detail so in this case basically the first step that we are going to talk about is uh, how the bond breaking of that is tertiary butyl bromide takes place between the carbon and the bromine uh, atom so let us understand that one so this particular step have a particular name so i'm not mentioning the name over here right now but uh, let us understand that how the reaction proceeds and then now we can give the name to the step uh, that is been involved in this s1 mechanism so the first thing that we are going to talk is basically we are uh, talking about uh, the tertiary butyl bromide that is being mentioned over here so basically we know that this the bromine is more electronegative and uh, talking about the carbon uh, carbocation or this uh, uh, carbon which is basically partially positive but till yet it is not been converted into carbocation because the bond has not been breaking uh, so that's the reason that uh, after the process where we could see that is a uh, a kind of reversible process could take place over here where we could find that uh, the bromine uh, atom will be try to it will dissociate with that of the carbon cation uh, or it is it will be dissociated with that of the carbon through which it has been associated so as to form a carbocation so so this is the first step that i'm going to talk about and in a very deep uh, detail that is uh, that would be a formation of that is a transition state that i'm talking about and what is transition state let me talk about that also but let us understand that uh, Basically, in this case, there would be a possibility of that uh, the bond between the carbon and the bromine that would break in such a manner that uh, we could find. The bromine that would acquire partially negative charge, while the carbon will acquire partially positive charge so this is a state basically where we can find that the reactant has been converted into a such a state uh, which is uh, having a particular higher energy or which is uh, very unstable so that's the reason that this kind of state are basically known as transition so i'm mentioning here as transition state one because uh, in step number two also there is a possibility that we could get a transition state which has higher energy compared to that of the reactant. So therefore, in this case, basically the transition state can be called as basically uh, the state where uh, a reactant is been converted to uh, a particular state which has higher energy and this is what uh, the transition state is. So this reaction is not till yet complete because uh, this is a very slow step actually. So since it is a very slow step, we could say that uh, it is basically known as the rate determining step or I could write it as RDS, the rate determining step. So once the bromine uh, uh, that has been completely dissociated with that of the carbon through which it has been associated, uh, so now we could say that uh, the product that could be formed is basically, I have to mention over here, that is now the carbon will get partially it was partially positive now it will be completely positive charged while the rest of the species that is it will be br minus so this is a step where we have found that uh, the carbon uh, which had a partially positive charge when it was been associated with that of bromine atom and now it has been now completely converted into that is carbocation so therefore this uh, kind of step we could name it as that is
formation of carbocation. So this is what we have. But let me talk about this one. That is a uh, since this uh, carbon is basically it undergoes that is sp3 hybridization and that's the reason that uh, it will have a particular angle or basically we could say that uh, it will have a particular geometry like tetrahedral geometry but meanwhile this sp3 hybridized carbon atom has been converted into basically a carbocation which is basically sp2 hybridized and that's the reason that the bond angle between uh, this carbon is basically 120 degree and that's the reason that the geometry has been changed and uh, now we could possibly say that uh, the sp3 carbon atom is being converted into sp2 carbon atom and now the next thing is now the nucleophile that is this is what we are talking about that is we are talking about the uh, that is univolecular substitution reaction and that also nucleophilic so that's the reason now the product that has been formed that will be involved in the step number two so as to form that is a reactor so now this is the product that has been formed from uh, step number one and now this will be included in uh, that is in utilization so as to form uh, the main product that is in step number two so now let us discuss this step number two so talking about this step number two that is uh, uh, in step number one we have formed that is uh, carbocation that is could be represented in this way as i'm mentioning over here and this carbon will have a completely positive charge so now if the carbocation is been formed in the first step and we have to react it with that of a nucleophile and in this case we have used uh, the general reaction we have used that is KOH or basically we could also uh, say that uh, the OH is basically uh, the more responsible so as to form an alcohol basically tertiary butyl halide. So now basically I am mentioning it over here as OH minus. So this OH- is a nucleophile and while talking about this carbocation, this carbocation has an angle of 120 degree and that's the reason that this uh, uh, OH- which is basically more affinitive towards the carbon center or which is more uh, affinitive towards the positive center that is nothing but the carbocation. So that's the reason that it has now two possible two possibility uh, so as to attack uh, the carbocation that is the first is front side attack and the next possibility is backside attack. So this will give us basically two possibility if where we could find that uh, there are the two different configurations uh, of uh, the product that we could get over here. So now, so let us talk about the transition state here also. So here, uh, this is what I'm going to talk about uh, where we could find that uh, the transition state could be formed and uh, let us uh, talk about that one. So in this case basically the carbon which is uh, partially which is completely positive so now that would be reacted with that of or that would be attached with that of the OH minus ion so here basically the OH minus ion it will try to uh, attack from front side also or from back side also suppose if it attacks from front side then this would be basically the possible product that we could get over here but the configuration I am not mentioning in here about the stereochemistry right now but uh, uh, I will mention about the uh, that is uh, the diagram or I will mention about the how the configuration changes but uh, for a while we could say that uh, this is the transition state that we could form and there is also a possibility that we could get uh, so this is a front side attack one and uh, talking about the next one that is so either this is the possible product that we could get here basically suppose here this is the possible product that we could get over here so this is uh, the uh, product that is been formed through the backside attack of the nucleophile. So this is the different kind of possibility that we could get over here. But let me introduce one thing that is the both the OH cannot attack uh, on the same carbon. So this is just the possibility that I have mentioned over here and this is known as transition state 2. But it has been observed that uh, the OH minus ion which is basically the nucleophile that will attack the carbocation and that kind of reaction is very fast and this is what we have. But this transition state, which is of high energy, obviously it has to convert into very stable form or it has to lose energy. Uh, so that's the reason that this uh, transition state will convert into a certain kind of product that we are going to talk about. And that is what I'm talking about the stereochemistry right now.
So the product that could be formed uh, in this uh, BC reaction because I'm continuing the step number two as I have no space over there, so I'm continuing over here. So the product that we could get over here is basically suppose if we are talking about a, a front side attack, suppose a front side attack has been happening. So therefore, we could say that is the product that has been formed is. So this is the first possibility that we could get if uh, the OH is attacking uh, the carbocation from front side and this is what we have and this is the structure that we have. So this is not the exact configuration that I could make on the 2D, uh, on the 2D page but uh, this is what we have. And talking about the next possibility that is, the next possibility is where we could find that uh, the OH which has been attacking on the back side from back side attack. So therefore this is the OH that would attack on the back side and that's the reason that it would be an inverse of uh, the product that we have got over here. So therefore the product that could be represented as in this way. So these are the two uh, different kind of configuration that we could get over here. The both are the same, but the thing is the configuration is different. And uh, this is what uh, I would talk about. That is, uh, so this is the product that we have got over here. It is basically uh, whenever we have used the first, that is uh, the first reactant that is what we have used here. The bromine it was present on the right side, and here also the OH which is present on the right side. For simplicity, just uh, to understand. So therefore, this is called as basically uh, the retention molecule. Or the retention configuration. Well, this one here basically here the OH is attacking from the back side, and that's the reason it is called as inversion configuration. But it has been noticed that suppose if we are using tertiary butyl bromide and we are uh, making it uh, in a uh, hydrolysis process, so therefore there are two possibilities that we could get retention and inversion and both equally. So therefore we could say that is the possible products is basically 50% retention and 50% inversion product that we could get and this kind of uh, product that we have got suppose if we are considering this uh, product that we have got over here and uh, suppose this is this is what we have uh, chosen uh, that is a uh, tertiary uh, butyl alcohol so this is what tertiary butyl alcohol is suppose if we have got over here as a chiral carbon atom suppose if this is H this is phenyl and this is CH3 suppose it anyhow we have got over here so similarly, uh, even that will have the same kind of substrate that would be attached over here, but the difference would be the configuration would be the difference. And we are talking about this thing, then uh, this one would have been exhibited that is dextro form, while the other one would have been converted into an levo form configuration. So therefore, the both the mixture would be called to be that of that is a racemic mixture. And this is the possibility that we could find out over here. But for a while, we have uh, introduced that is a uh, tertiary butyl alcohol. And uh, that is what it has been formed with the help of tertiary butyl uh, bromide, and we have did the hydrolysis of that one. So this is what we have got over here. And uh, now let us understand uh, the uh, step number two. What would be the name of step number two? So the step number two can be given the name as uh, that is formation of a racemic mixture. So, but here we have not formed a racemic mixture over here. Here we have got the inversion of the product. So therefore, we could also write the step number two as. Here where we could find that is inversion of configuration is also being possible. So at last, so we have did uh, most of the thing and uh, the last thing that has been remaining is basically energy profile diagram. Yes. So the energy profile diagram is nothing but it gives the uh, detail about how much the energy has been uh, required or what kind of change that we could observe during a course of a reaction. So that is what I want to talk about. So let me give you a short glimpse of it. So there are basically uh, two axes that uh, we are going to measure over here is basically. So this is basically reaction coordinates or the progress of reaction you could say in that manner. While this is indicating the energy or the potential energy. So talking about the next thing that is, since we have used a reactant that is tertiary butyl bromide, so this is the energy of that tertiary butyl bromide or I will name it as A. So that tertiary butyl bromide that was been included in step number one, let me uh, recall that thing again. 
So this is step number one. So this is the energy of the reactant that we have and it has been converted into higher state energy that is transition state one. So therefore it will be converted into and higher energy that is transition state one. And now that transition state one can be converted into that is a carbocation and carbocation has comparatively uh, less energy compared to this transition state. So therefore uh, that is a very stable product that we have got over in the step number one. So that will have a stability over here like this way. So this is the carbocation I'm mentioning here as C plus. And later in step number two, where we could see that the step number two has been uh, again it, it has been giving a transition state. So therefore, I'm mentioning here as transition state, but it has been it will be lesser than compared to that of the transition state one. And now ultimately that transition state is basically giving us the product. And this let me introduce this product as suppose it is D. So this is the thing that we have, but we have to compare certain kind of energy and certain kind of basically energy has been required so as to convert the reactant A into a transition state and that is basically known as activation energy. So therefore, we could say that the difference between that is the energy level of the reactant A at the transition state is known as energy of activation that is I would uh, write it over here as EA1 and again here is a transition state too. So for comparing this thing. I would name it as EA2 and this is the energy of the product and meanwhile we could say that the product that has been formed over here it has lesser energy compared to that of the reactant so it indicates that the product is very much stable and the product that has been formed is because of the exothermic reaction so so this is what we have did in thermodynamics or in thermochemistry also so therefore the difference between this two is basically it is delta H or it is called to be heat of reaction so this is the energy profile diagram that I want to talk about and uh, that's it. So therefore, there are various terms that we could uh, get to know about this kind of reaction that how much energy of activation is been needed for a reactor to convert into a transition state and only obviously that transition state would be uh, be able to convert uh, into a product and we, we could also get the information about the how much energy uh, is being lost or how much energy uh, is being gained during the course of the reaction. So therefore there are various concepts that uh, we could get from the mechanism of reaction only. So therefore this was my main intention to talk about SN1 mechanism. So that's it. So thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you have understood this video very clearly and you have got to know about various concepts behind this SN1 mechanism. So thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you'll share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to channel. Thank you so much.